Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to find the center of gravity, how to locate it um, for this reindeer that we've made for 5.8. This assembly file is in the teacher resource guide, so I basically just opened up the file and created a new project folder, threw it in there, and now I'm ready to go. So the problem is this. If I need to locate the center of gravity, that, that's pretty simple. All you have to do for that is come up to the View tab and click on Show Visibility of the Center of Gravity. And when I do that, it'll give me a gigantic yellow ball. It'll give me X, Y, and Z axes and planes. And you'll notice that it also gives me the work planes and things like that. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier because this is a somewhat symmetrical part. The, the assembly constraints are kind of confusing with this. But at least I have some planes that I can hover over, and I can use these planes to actually find things later on. So the, the question is this, though. If I push this from the side, let's say that I come in from this left direction, the right side of the deer, and I push this way, it's probably going to tip over following the opposite direction, right? So I'm going to consider then my tipping force to be applied maybe at the base of the neck right around here, which means the tipping edge then of the object is going to be the outer part of the leg down here. And if I look at it in three dimensions, it's really good. It's weird. There we go. I look at it in three dimensions, it's really the outer part of the leg. So a plane that passes through these two points. So the problem is this then, how far is it horizontally from the center of gravity right here to the tipping edge? What is this horizontal distance and how do I find that? And maybe it's easy here because this is a fairly symmetrical object, but you'll have students that don't create anything. It'll be kind of random. It'll be, you know, maybe not centered. What do we do in that circumstance? It's an easy way to find this horizontal distance from the middle of the yellow dot to the tipping edge itself. So I'm going to walk you through an easy way to go about this problem. Okay, what I'm going to do is this then. I'm going to go first and I'm going to add some sketch planes. So I'm back in the assemble tab. I'm going to add, because it's a cylindrical object, I'm going to add a plane here and there are lots of options. The one I need in this particular case is probably going to be tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane. So tangent to a surface, you can see it kind of the icon here. What that means is it's, we've got a curved surface and my, par my plane is going to touch that curved surface. It's going to touch the leg in this case. And then parallel to a plane says, okay, so I have a, cur a plane that's touching the surface, but what's the orientation? Which plane do you want to orient to? So I'm going to choose this and it's going to ask me then for the surface and then the plane that I want to match. I'm going to click here. I want to touch this leg. I want to be parallel to, let's see if I can choose this. It does not let me choose this plane. So I'm going to come over here underneath the assembly. You'll notice there's an origin folder and I've already expanded it. The origin folder has to do with the assembly itself. Here are the three planes that I can orient and be parallel to. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this. I want to be parallel to, in this case, the YZ plane. I want to be in the same orientation. So I'm going to click on it. And you'll notice now all of a sudden I have a new yellow rectangle. That is work plane one. It's hard to tell where it is right now, so I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to hover. Oh, look. Okay, so it's on the inside portion of the leg. All right. That's not bad, except I really wanted to be on the outside instead. There are all sorts of ways to go through and, and get that one on the outside of the plane instead. You, you're you going to end up Googling if you teach this class. You're going to Google how to do stuff. So I'm going to show you just a way that we can kind of work around this. Instead, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go. All right, I want to create a new plane. I want to offset. But first, I need to know how far I need to offset this plane that I just created. So let's see here. Let's go hover in a leg. And let's just pick any of them. It doesn't matter which one. And I know that I was created. I'm going to double click on this so I can go into the part file. So now I'm working. It's on the back left leg, but they're all the same. So that's fine. And it was created by extruding a circle. I go look at this, the circle was two inches in diameter. So really what I need to do is I need to take my work plane. I need to move it two inches farther out. Agreed. So I'm going to go finish sketch. I'm going to click return to get out of the part and back into the assembly. And what I know is this. I needed to move this plane two inches farther out. That's an offset plane. So I'm going to just go plane. I'm going to click on the existing one and drag it towards me without letting off the mouse. It wants to move it negative 8 inches in this case. Negative is just a directional term. I'm going to type in negative 2. I'm going to hit enter. And now I have a work plane that's floating out on the edge of the surface. That is the tipping edge. 
The rest of this is easy. First of all, I'm going to come over back to work plane one, the original one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make it invisible. I don't want to see it anymore. Now all I have is the work plane here on the outside, and I have the work planes that exist from the center of gravity. And what I'm interested in is what's the horizontal distance. I'm going to float around in the back instead. I feel like it gives maybe a little bit better view. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to tools, and I want to measure. What I want to measure is the distance from this work plane to its corresponding work plane on the center of gravity. I click, it's 2.6 inches. So now when I do my math, the horizontal distance between the tipping edge and the center of gravity is 2.6 inches. That's the easiest way by far to go through, I think, and find the distance from the center of gravity to the tipping edge, no matter what the shape is. Hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through how to find then the, the vertical distance up to where the tipping force is applied. That's going to be really simple.